Welcome to the Game Deflators podcast, episode 22. My name's John, and I'm joined by Ryan and James, who just won't leave our house for some strange reason. They Ryan, keep beating me. So, here on the Game Deflators podcast, we like to talk about games we just recently picked up, games we're currently playing, and as always, the reviled and hated crappy game challenge this week. It's kind of an inflation deflation too, though, because really, James did a poor job this week, and we kind of like the game. Yeah, we were into it. Yeah, I would agree. Well, I wouldn't say I did a poor job. I would say everyone that voted on the crappy game challenge did a poor job, because they were so close to having to play Space Ace on the SNES, but... Or rather, however, since they did somewhat enjoy the game after their initial initial bitching, I am going to have to really step it up and put some careful thought into the two options that we'll be voting for next week. Yeah, luckily, uh, we went ahead and gave a fantastic game to James. Uh, we just posted on Instagram. Uh, Wu-Tang Clang. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a fighting game, though, so you might enjoy it a little bit at least. Use those footsies. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you're you're truly gonna enjoy it man um so as always let's go ahead and get started with our recent pickups this week i know james finally had a pickup yeah i actually uh finally went out and got something uh yakuza 6 um uh the art of life edition was on sale at best buy and of course i'm still one of the fortunate few who still has their gamers club unlock discount up until it expires so uh, threw that in with a little coupon. I basically picked it up for about 12 bucks. Uh, very cool little uh, art book in there. And, of course, the uh, the Yakuza's uh, game series, everyone has nothing but good things to say about it. So all of them are on my to play list. Yeah, for sure, man. I actually just need Kiwami 2, and then I think I'm good to go. I might need number 4, if I'm correct. I think that was on PS3. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. It's, it's really hard to keep track of because most of them that were like 1 and 2... I want to say we're on PS2, but then they got re-released on PS4 is Kiwami. Yeah, they had Zero, Kiwami, Kiwami and then Kiwami, Kiwami 2. 2. And then I think it's 5 and 6. And No, no, it's actually 5 is on PS3. I want to say it's 3, 4, and 5 are on PS3. And then PS4 has 6, if I'm correct. I think so. Plus, they've been, as far as I recall, they are re-releasing the other, the PS3 ones on PS4 as well. So... If you don't already have them, it's a it's a good good place to pick them up. Obviously, yeah. I think Yakuza Dead Souls is also on PS3. I think that's the version Dead Souls. You don't know about that one? It, Ryan, it's right there. Pull it off my shelf so James can. It's, it's towards the end. Or oh, you know what? You know what? It isn't on the shelf because it was part of that giant stack that I had <laughs> sitting here <laughs> in the corner. All Yakuza. Yeah, I just had like, like this... actually honestly all the Yakuza series that I've purchased in the last year was sitting on the floor in a giant stack and. You know, obviously I'm moving soon, so having to put that somewhere and it, it just ended up in a box. Um, but like you, dude, I picked up Yakuza 6 as well because it's on sale. 20 bucks is 50% off the current rate on the game. And, you know, likely in the next six months, it's the lowest it's going to hit is 20 bucks in the next six months. So honestly, it's not a bad deal. Plus, you got your 20% discount. Oh, absolutely. And one thing I did forget about last week when I asked is... uh. Uh, right before I came out to Arizona, I actually did pick up uh, Toki Retro Collector Edition on the Nintendo Switch, uh, which is $50 or was $50 at GameStop. Now in those D-bags, it could be $80 by now. But uh, specifically, it's just a, a retro remake of the old Toki games, but it comes with a lot of cool extras. It has a... That, that is your phone. It should have been silenced prior to the recording, sir. That is quite correct, sir. Did it come up? You know, you know how they do it with the movies and they had the whole little warning. I'm going to start playing one of those every time you record with us from now on. Ryan, you too. Let's silence all go your phone, to the sir. Podcast. Let's all go to the As podcast. As you reach for yours. As I reach for mine. I'm just verifying, man, because you guys screwed up. Yeah, mine was good to go. Not verified yet, folks. See, we are not verified. We need more followers, folks. Get us verified. We're game deflators on like every platform. Yeah, definitely needs to happen. So you were interrupted by your phone. What was the last thing you were going to say about, I think it was Yakuza? No, no, no. I was talking about Toki Retro's Collector's Edition. Essentially, it uh, it's a Switch game, but it comes with uh, all sorts of cool little extras, comic books, some artwork. Uh, specifically, it comes where you can build your own little mini arcade cabinet that your Switch actually slides into. What? Yeah, it's actually really cool. And it's not made of, like, cardboard. It's actually made of 
not quite balsa wood, but something uh, a little bit stronger than balsa wood. I was actually rather impressed, and that's a buddy of mine had gotten it, and I helped him put it together, and I saw everything that was in there. I was like, you know, for 50 bucks. For 50 bucks, I'll feed the beast, and fortunately, that wasn't enough to save GameStop so far. So far. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, if you heard our podcast last week, we talked about GameStop and the dumpster fire that it is uh, trying to trade itself in and, and failing. So my pickups this week, obviously, I also had Yakuza 6. I got the same exact copy you did. I thought it was pretty cool, the whole concept of an art book mixed with the case, and that was actually pretty sweet for the most part, but I kind of prefer Steelbook Editions in all honesty uh additional pickups i had i had a few atari games i picked up recently at a goodwill uh donkey kong donkey kong jr and several other no-name games that are going to sit on a shelf and do nothing for the rest of their life including et number 364 because we started keeping track how long ago um that is probably et number five for me in all honesty and actually if you look on the floor there, there's an et label that fell off so i gotta glue that back on Indeed. I don't even collect Atari games, and I think I've had three or four copies over the years. Yeah, no, I know you don't. Um, I actually do play my Atari games every now and then. Um, so outside of that, today I actually picked up Thrasher, uh, is it Skate and Destroy? I think it is on the PS1. Uh, Pokemon Ultra Moon. I picked that one up on the 3DS. And I picked up Fear Effect on PS1, which is a game I've actually wanted to play for quite a while. So pretty stoked about those. Got a sweet flipping deal on all of that. I think in total it was under 30 bucks for all the overall games I actually got. And then I picked up a 3DS XL for, I think, 24 after a discount. So not bad. Yeah, I've never played any of those. But well, now I'm, you definitely, can. I'm definitely interested in Fear Effect. I've always remember seeing the cover art from that and being like, wow, that looks interesting. I'd like to check that out. Fear Effect has a lot of cool um, hand-drawn uh, animated graphics, things like that. Um, I think I recall I beat the first one years ago. I didn't beat the second one. Uh, but you did mention earlier you were playing some game I hadn't heard of. You essentially were saying you were more or less losing sleep, staying up till 1 a.m. playing it. What was that game you were talking about? Yeah, I've, I've talked about it before here. I've been playing a ton of Cave Blazer still. So the only thing I picked up was my Switch a whole lot this week and for way too long. So, so no longer playing with your wife. I mean, Kingdom Hearts. No, actually, she beat it. She Holy beat shit. it oh, already. She? Yeah, she beat it within four days. And her playtime was like 36 hours or something. So you do the math. That's like half the time. Almost. You know what? I'm honestly going to stretch it out and play over 13 years so I can get the full full value out of that game. The amount of time I've waited, I, I will play Well, and then one hour a And day. then the next night we went to a Super Bowl party. John was there and our friend's wife and her beat it again on her copy wait they beat it again that night yeah they beat it the next night mel beat it oh so she has no re or no excuse but to play send away sacrifice now and give me back my copy and headset exactly and you know you're listening to this mel you know you are <laughs> i was just gonna say if you really are gonna stretch out taking 13 years to actually finish kingdom hearts 3 to get your money's worth Look on the bright side, by the time you're done with that and you're doing the G, I wonder what I should play next. The Final Fantasy VII remaster or remake should be done by then, too. Oh, yeah, for See, sure. I like this excuse a lot. This is now my new excuse. I'm going to beat Red Dead, you know, once it's been <laughs> the allotment of time since Red Dead 1 to Red Dead 2. And yeah, that'll be my, my window. It'll the, get done. It's the perfect thing, man, because what you can honestly do is play like 50 games a day and you just got to play them for like 15 minutes. And you're like, all right, cool. I finished like the first walking portion of this mission. Now I'm going to get to the next section on another game. You just keep flipping discs. By the time 13 years pass, you'll, you'll beat 50 games. It'll be great. I know. Two weeks in, you'll finish the tutorials. Yeah. And then with Square games, by the time you finish it, the next Square game will be out. So it's great. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think that's a, a perfect way to do this. Um, going into Kingdom Hearts, I, as you know, kind of against what I wanted to do, I really wanted to play God of War and then jump into um, Sukaden 2. But I went ahead and just picked up Birth by Sleep. So I was going to play it on PSP and then just said, screw it, let me play it on 2.5. Uh, so I'm playing it right now, and I'm actually enjoying Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. The only thing I'm dreading is from my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that once you beat it with like Terra, you have to restart basically everything from scratch level one with aqua and then do the same thing for ventus yeah or like brie she played ventus's route and aqua's route 
and half of Terra's and then just watched all the cutscenes on YouTube. That's probably a pretty good way to do it. I may actually just do that instead. Uh, yeah, it's, so we'll that, it was like her favorite game. I mean, Aqua's like her bay, so... Yeah, it was actually pretty fun so far. I mean, I'm I'm enjoying the the melding concept so far of the different abilities, although it's kind of crappy because I'm sitting there like melding two abilities together. And I'm like, cool, I just got this ability. And then I go to the next Moogle in the next world and we're like, hey, look, we'll just sell it to you for 150 gold. Like, but I just spent all my time leveling this up to meld them and get this awesome ability thinking I had to do this and you were just going to sell it to me the next world over. That's some BS. I don't know. I've never played it. Yeah, it's it's fun so far. So I'm enjoying that. And next game, I swear the next game is going to be Sukaden 2. That that is the next game. If James, if you get me to play any other damn game, I'm gonna curse you. Dude, we have not played Super Mario World in weeks. You know, this you is you start- see what he's doing to me, Ryan? Mm-hmm. You see, see what he's doing. This is starting to feel like, you know, we start playing it back in Florida and then you moved and we never finished. And now you're about to move again, and we're never going to finish. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, see. Just we'll like, see. I, I come out here all the way over here on vacation to play Secret of Mana with you, and then you get me cli- climbing mountains and shit, so I'm too tired to do it. Yeah, well, we'll um, we'll see if we can finish uh, Super Mario World. We're almost done. We're about three-fourths of the way through. I mean, it's not that hard of yeah. a game. We're at least halfway, yeah. You've given up on Crash Bandicoot, though. I wouldn't say I've given up. I just more or less, you know... Are watching me play. I watch you play and occasionally take turns, but you're definitely putting in far more effort into it than I am. It, the second one is very easy. Uh, Ryan, I don't know how much you played of the second game, but Crash Bandicoot 2 is much, much easier than Crash Bandicoot 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, like I difference. said, I only got through like the first few levels. Yeah, I think I'm on like the fifth fifth level or something. and I mean, like fifth world overall, like the tiered system. I think I have half of the crystals and such right now, and we're enjoying seeing Crash pulling out the long crystal and the diamond from his butt. Yep. Every time, like that's pretty fantastic. Does he pull one out of his nose yet? Uh, I think he spits one up. If I'm correct, spits I'm not one sure. Up. He pulls one out like he swallowed a sword. He pulls one out of his ear. Uh, he has pulled the long crystal and the giant diamond out of his ass, or at least out of his pants. At the very least, the front and rear. Yep, yep. I don't want to know what what they're doing with those, but uh, yeah, that's what he's doing. Just uh, and then he dances know, afterwards. He's super excited that it happens. He's probably happy to get that fucking fifty pound diamond out of his ass after riding on a fucking polar bear cub the whole way. Yeah, you'd think Lemmy Winks would have helped that diamond kind of make its way through the body, but yeah, Lemmy Winks, Lemmy Winks. <laughs> All right. S- so what is well we don't have any one dollar news so how about other news all right so i got a triple threat of switch news for you folks so nintendo ryan uh, loves nintendo in an article he just loves by the switch. nintendo's bay ben hashtag sponsor could be a sponsor lamaro i think it is uh that he wrote he was talking about, and you can find this on Gamenesia, uh, rumor, smash glitch caused by specific memory cards. So apparently a bunch of Reddit users got together and figured out that all of their corrupt save data from what we talked about last week with the PD Piranha in All-Stars mode, they're all playing on a Samsung 256 gig, 100 millibyte per second, micro SDXC Evo Select memory card with an adapter, the MBME256GA slash AM. So if you have that set up, beware. If you don't know what I just said, look up the article and make sure. And likely you don't have it. So, and if you do, I'll be shocked. Actually, that Samsung uh, memory card is rather popular. Is it really? Yeah, it goes on sale pretty often. And for the most part, it's a good memory card, but you just said they're they're using it with an adapter? Yeah, that's what it says here. I'm guessing that it's because it's micro, they have an adapter because it's a mini SD in the Switch, isn't it? Yeah, it takes micro SD cards. So I'm wondering what they're doing with that adapter. That could actually be part of the problem. Or if this is all a ploy for Nintendo to say, you need to buy our branded memory cards. Um, or maybe it's bundled. I'm betting it comes bundled because a lot of those micros come bundled with an adapter. So that's yeah. probably just the product overall name. Oh, yeah, most likely because I, I know for a fact that micro SD card, you know, it takes a micro. Not yeah, a, that's true because it goes in the same like right behind the game slot or something. Right. But um, yeah, actually, yeah, it goes under the uh, the little uh, kickstand. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. Those, that's what yeah. it's at. I, I put it in and I never opened the kickstand again, probably. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like you stick it in there and you forget. 
Um, I would say besides that, Reddit obviously can be one of the most useful sites on the web. Uh, I did see that article. I also did see that Nintendo finally, after days of not speaking on it, finally just kind of admitted, look, we don't know what's going on, only that we know it's a problem. And that sounds pretty likely as a person who works in IT. Usually everyone has the same thing in common. Well, hint, hint, that could be part of the problem. It's um, just compatibility issues at that point, right? Yeah, it, there should be, once Nintendo sorts it out, they should be able to patch it. It'd be pretty terrible to say, well, you just can't use this type of SD card, you know? So would like this said, be a ploy? Would this be a problem that would maybe be more widespread too? Like I understand that it's happening with this specific game, with this specific DLC in this one scenario. Is it weird that the memory card would only wig out during that, or should people be looking for other potential issues? They really should be watching carefully at the other potential things. Um, I would personally want to know: Is it? happening only with digital copies or just cartridge copies or both uh, but essentially for the saves to get corrupted like that it has to be happening during the right process when it's actually saving to the card at some point now it could be they they're caching information from the cartridge or downloaded information to the sd card and that is being read and modified as they go because uh uh some of us old fart gamers like myself remember the plague of ps1 memory cards getting randomly corrupted you know just like you go to save one day or go to pop it in or you your little brother yanks out your memory card while it's in the middle of saving or while the system's on something like that and just your your shit's gone that kind of thing this is why i have 15 ps2 memory cards that and i may be a hoarder you know it's uh hashtag definitely a hoarder (laughs) it's funny the only problem i've ever had with nintendo and memory cards is just the fact that like they had to ship animal crossing with one because it took the whole thing yeah, honestly, that's what I was about to say. The only time I've ever had issue with the Nintendo memory card is that the uh, the original GameCube cards were small. They did not hold much at all. Yeah. I actually, I want to tie this into the next article. So, talking about memory cards and uh, storage data. So, I have an article here. This is on Link Cable, uh, posted by Alex St. Amour. And it is about rumors of a Nintendo Switch Mini. I know we kind of talked about this a few weeks ago, so we'll get into this. But my question for you is, like, when we got Kingdom Hearts 3, I had to go through and delete a bunch of stuff and clear up room because we all know that these games getting bigger and bigger is taking up more and more space of, you know, our memory, our built-in memory, and not everybody really uses the cloud or has access to it because of, you know, whether or not they're using Nintendo Online service. But the Switch doesn't have a huge, big, built-in memory. That's why they don't get good games. So, well, no, this is my question. If they were going to have cartridges, which they do again, because they are getting to the point where they're better than Blu-ray and faster, so... If you're going to do that, is it possible to just bundle in a memory card with the game or build it into the game so that the cart has enough memory so that you're not taking up all your precious space on your system? Just have like the games have enough memory to go in and load in. Uh, Yeah, it's absolutely possible. It's actually one of my grumbles about the Switch games, especially like uh, Wolfenstein, The New Order... Uh, and I believe Doom were two good examples that the vast majority of the game still had to be downloaded. Like the Wolfenstein specifically, it says it right on the package very clearly. Um, but yeah, essentially the Switch cards are just specialized SD cards that that NAND flash memory um, that you know it can be there. They can also, although it's not popular, they could package it with SD cards that have the uh the rest of the game stored on it as read only so that you would still have a limited amount of space for additional saves and things like that but it would already have the data written there so you wouldn't have to download it but because nintendo's always done these kind of bundles i mean that's how everybody got the ram add-on for the n64 by buying uh donkey kong do you want to you want to tell them the real reason they did that just to make more money oh no 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 the well, technically, yes. They actually had to do that so they could sell the game. There was a game-breaking glitch in Donkey Kong 64, uh, Donkey Kong Country 64, sorry, that they found the only feasible way to fix the glitch was to use the ex- the memory expansion. So that's actually why that was packed with that particular game. Well, didn't they also bundle the Rumble with Star Fox? 
Yes, they did. And that one I think they did just to uh just because they can, just to sell Rumble Packs, or rather just to sell Star Fox 64. Yeah, it's kind of, in a sense, uh, an introductory piece to that. So, I mean, if you had one Rumble Pack and your buddy comes over, or buddies, and they want to play for a Rumble Pack, they're going to buy them, too. So, you're not going to get four Rumble Packs in a well, box. And then again, Nintendo's always been the king of peripheral add-ons, haven't they? Uh, yeah. I mean, from the failed disk drive for the N64, and then the... Uh, well, and every the Game Boy player and every single item ever released on the Wii. Game Boy camera, Game Boy camera printer. Oh, the e card oh, yeah, reader. The, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the e card reader, the Game Boy Advance games that have built in rumble. Ooh, Those you stupid stuck a in cables them? that you uh-huh. had to connect Game Boy everybody's color. GBA to so that you could play multiplayer Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Oh, yeah, the link cable. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Microphones. Yep. For via so GameCube. maybe it's maybe yep. it's just about time they start coming out with some more actual like first party stuff for the Switch. Like I see all the time like third party peripherals and stuff well, for they do have, hooking onto your Switch, but they I have, haven't seen a whole lot. They of, have first party memory cards and such like that you can expand. Well, no, no, not not memory cards. John, think bigger. Think bigger. Think well, bigger. It's a think Switch. Like, think They're up. thinking smaller. Clearly, you just talked about like, the Switch Mini. Yeah, like, that's true. Like, okay, so going back to the Switch Mini, this is a good point. So. This article basically guesstimates what we talked about. It's like replacing the 3DS because it's it's been doing poorly and more poorly each year since the Switch is released because the Switch is its only competitor in the market and it's the same company competing against itself for space. So if they come out with a smaller, cheaper Switch, take out the TV connectivity and the removable Joy-Cons, and they're thinking that that's the thing. And I just... So I you still basically think, have a 2DS too. Yeah, I think it's they totally antithetical to the idea of the Switch. Like, the whole point of the Switch is that you have home and portability and two controllers built in. So here, here's the thing. We talked about a while back, I think it was like 2019 predictions in like episode yeah. 16 or yeah. something like that. And we had brought this up and the guy that was like, breaking news, this is going down. Um, Nintendo's at a place right now where they likely need to kind of get back into that handheld market in a sense. The 3DS has been there forever. They need to kind of spice it up in a way, right? The calling, 4DS. 4DS. Calling it a Switch Mini is likely just a, we're just going to call it a Switch Mini to call it a Switch Mini. Well, like it's, they have the DS XL. Yeah, exactly. It's likely going to be... the Game Boy Micro. I doubt they console. will, from a marketing standpoint, it'd be the dumbest reason to call it the Switch Mini. I would think it'd be better to call it something new as a handheld to make it its own thing well, versus a Switch and create confusion well, in the market. Well, I, I think the thing that actually kind of, like I, I was saying, I think it's totally antithetical to the Switch as a concept, but I think that it, after reading this article, I think it makes sense. I think that you want to be able to sell Switch games to people who maybe don't have a good TV, maybe just want to upgrade their portable gaming device and not necessarily establish like a whole new console thing. Because I play my Switch almost exclusively in portable mode and almost never yes, with just the Joy-Con. So I, I could see myself having purchased this if I wasn't already invested to the point I'm at now, but that's what makes but it's this a so downgrade stupid, to get rid of your switch now. Well, that's what makes it so stupid. Like the point of a switch is you don't have to play it on your TV. You can take the kickstand, pop it on a desk and sit there with controls and play it via that mode or play it as a handheld. Yeah, and it but works if, just great. But if you can buy it for $50 less or a hundred dollars less and you don't own a console but you have a 3ds and now all of a sudden well playstation is not going to make another one and you're not getting your money's worth of the switch because those features don't apply to you like having a smaller cheaper alternative just for people who are purely portable gamers to upgrade to it makes a lot of sense like i could totally see people out there who are like probably pc master race but they don't want to lug a you know hardcore gaming laptop everywhere they go. Yeah, the so they Switch, might have a Switch 3DS. Isn't even, Switch isn't even that big, though. I mean, if you really think about it from the portability standpoint, it's not much bigger than a 3DS XL or even a 2DS for that matter. Yeah, it's but like if you... Two if 2DSs you, put together. Yeah, but if you take out like the interlocking mechanism that locks the Joy-Cons on, you can scrunch it in a little bit. 
and you can probably thin it out by taking out whatever sends all the video signal out so to you're, the you're console left, box. You're left with a 2DS. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it comes down to, because you're just going to basically... Yeah, but a 2DS can't play Switch games, John. Not Understandably. Yet. This is really just saying, we're going to take a Switch and make it a little smaller. Now, if they include the ability to play... 2DS or 3D like 3DS based games and DS games and your Switch. Dude, it, you can't even that would make sense. To you me. can't even download those games. They're not going to build in a second compatibility port. Yeah, it it just seems when like they're a waste. trying to slim it down and make it cheaper, they're not going to all of a sudden add a whole new artifact of technology to it. James, you chime in. Yeah, I'm I'm getting ready to. I was about to tell you all to shut the hell up. All right. So first off, let me say since you are talking about you know the lack of any other real handheld gaming in the market. Uh, by the way, Sega, here's your chance. Duh. Um, I got my off, Nomad ready just in case. <laughs> Sweet. Watch it Another shitty Sonic game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, as for the uh, the PCMR, the PC Master Racers, uh, they actually have Nvidia Shields, uh, which are not much bigger than your iPad there. Um, and they actually have, they're essentially, the Nintendo Switch is built on very similar technology to the NVIDIA Shield tablets. And that's what they are, is they let you play portable. Plus, there are many pretty nice, badass Android uh, gaming systems that are designed very similar to the PS Vita. Uh, they allow them to do that. So anyhow, as far as what Ryan is saying, yeah, they could do things such as remove the Bluetooth capability, remove the external video out take the existing video memory dedicated to other things if they went with a slightly smaller screen they could also remove other parts for more room for a larger battery well they could upgrade to a better thinner screen by going with a non-touch because like i don't know hard i don't play very many touch screen switch games for the most part i mean there are some out there but you could go away from that whole thing or even do that whole thing and put in something akin to a small tablet screen or a large mobile phone screen well, that's thinner and better. Yes, they could. And theoretically, they could actually do the screen uh, without... I don't know if they can make them that small, but they do make touchscreen laptops that do not have the digitizer, which is that glass that we touch on our phones. There are touchscreen laptops and touchscreens that are literally just the led panel and it's touch capacitive it's uh i found out that out in uh, some of the later years of my repair business uh when i turned out i was like oh, wow this is a touch screen but it doesn't have the the glass digitizer on top it's just purely just the screen with its touch touch uh, capacity which is honestly really impressive because it's very very thin uh, now, theoretically, Nintendo could do this. Uh, would before anyone else chimes in or goes into the angry YouTube or Facebook comments or whatever, uh, many people will point out and say, like, well, they've already dispelled this rumor, blah, blah, blah. But other people are also quick to point out, yeah, they did the same thing when they announced uh, the new 3DS and things like that. Nintendo denied, denied, and a few days later, oh, yeah, we're totally doing this. Also, Nintendo knows they have everyone in their pocket. They really do because... Something like, as silly as it sounds to make like a switch to go, hashtag not trademark, hashtag we should trademark that. We should trademark it right now. Yeah, you we totally it should. First. Yeah, before Nintendo sues us for it. Uh, please don't sue us. Hold on. Timestamp, February 5th. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, What is it called? There was the 3DS and the 2DS, which I thought was a brilliant idea, where essentially you still get the dual screens but it's great for kids it's tough or more durable now they have was it the new 2ds xl that fucking folds it's essentially 3ds without the 3d and not as durable because i mean it snap oh know, absolutely just because of the folding itself but uh nintendo is uh they've pretty much always done that uh ever since the 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 onset of the game boy advance they're like oh it's wait a year well, or no, two but even revision. before that you had the game boy the game boy pocket the game boy color absolutely so I think Game Boy Micro. the way that I'm kind oh, yeah. of Still want one. thinking as we've been talking about this is like, you know, originally there were new consoles all the time, and then that kind of really slowed down and they started stretching that console release time period, and it really felt to me like the first time the second iteration thing happened was when they went from the PS1 to the PSX, and then they had the PlayStation 2... And the thin PlayStation Slim, and then Xbox just had Xbox. There were a couple different Xbox 360s, but that whole time, you know, Nintendo had one Wii, 
They had one GameCube. They had one N64. And then as soon as the DS came out, they had two Wii's, there's by the been way. a zillion. Or three. three. It's like 3.5, I believe. Yeah, they had three Wii's. But they They're all revisions. look the same. No, no they look no, different. No, no. One of them had the GameCube uh, adapters on the top and the ability to play GameCube games backwards compatible. See, then I... they released one that did not have that. And then they released a Wii Mini, which I think had a what? flip cover, didn't it? I don't know if the Wii Mini had a flip cover, but it I was visibly that was a smaller thing. and different. I saw oh, yeah. my launch Wii. I've never even looked at what other Wiis yeah, were. They out also there. released yep. black, baby blue. Well, I'm not white. talking about color. No, I know, but what I'm saying is like they released a, after the black consoles released, they released a version two of the Wii that stripped out the GameCube controller ports. Yeah. And then later on towards the end of its life cycle, they did release a Wii Mini. It was like fifty bucks brand new and it was like super small. Dude, we just talked about putting phones. Uh-huh. That was an alarm. It. That was an alarm. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, no, Nintendo did that. But uh to kind of get into it, you know, I don't think there's a there should be no reason to release another handheld console mark. They have the Switch. Well no no but l- listen to me follow this out. All okay. Right, all right, all right. So if they're getting away from having a home version console and a portable version console and Xbox has like the Xbox and the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S or Scorpio or that's the X, I don't even know. That's but, the S, then there's an X. Okay. So it's like if they have all these more powerful them. home console versions, think about this. They can have instead of the 2DS, the 3DS, the 3DS XL and the Switch... You could have the standard Switch, which is a middle-of-the-road, portable, and home console. Then you can have a mini Switch, which is all portable with none of the home console features. And then they can release, like, the Big Daddy Switch XL that is, like, a bigger, more robust with, like, you know, maybe full 1080p. 60 FPS lock in, maybe start to integrate some other stuff and bundle it with a pro controller. Like you could really see it as just being a introductory middle of the road, top of the line for home console and portable gaming at a premium price. Yeah, but and then an intro version. And then you have the same amount of stretch that you have between the 2DS, the 3DS XL and the switch already but there's actual tangible differences between them. And it's not like you're having to have two separate consoles to keep up with all the Nintendo releases because they'll all be Switch games. They'll all play on any version just at different levels. I can see them releasing like an upgraded Switch down the road, um, but to go with like a big daddy console that's much larger, that's really just a home console at that point. I would never in my wildest dreams want to take a very powerful console and have it as a handheld at that point. And to kind of tie in back on like the reason I don't feel we need any of this is the install base for the 3DS and the 2DS and all is so large at this point. But they're not going to keep making those games forever. They could continue that. No, they won't. Very much could. And the graphics... They, the they're same gonna reason have... they don't do that is the same reason that they don't have 2DS games anymore. They're all 3DS they never because they have that games. little knock thing to the side. No, they never had 2DS games. It's always been 3DS games that you lose the 3D functionality when you pop it into a 2DS console. That's really all that is. No, I mean like standard, like... It means DS games. Oh, yeah, like DS. just standard well, that was a DS previous games. console, though. And you could still play those DS games on a 3DS. Yeah, but they don't release new ones that well, you can play no, on your old console. the graphics Because they have better. to update it. But the 3DS does not have, by all means, bad graphics. And the install base is so large. No, it doesn't have bad graphics, but it has limited graphics. It's a handheld. There is, so is the Switch. The Switch is a handheld, and it has Breath of the Wild slash home console. Uh, there's three things I can tell you from my own personal experience, and I think we can agree on that Nintendo is very good at and will probably always do. Nintendo is good at sh- intentionally shorting supply to increase demand. Nintendo is also very good at releasing or putting out the things that we as consumers initially think we don't want, and then it just sells amazingly well. Amiibos. Yeah, for example. And then Nintendo is also very good at not actually giving us what we want, the things we would ask for. Like if you were to go up to uh, the Nintendo execs and say, hey, you know, it would sell like fucking hotcakes. 
Super Mario Maker on the Switch with you know with the additional texture packs and things we kept clamoring for, and the ability to take the you know Super Mario Maker anywhere and just hand it over to people. Hey, try out this game I made or this level I made, and things like that. That would sell, I think, amazingly well. But they won't do it. Just like the whole rumor from la- early last year, I think it was about uh you know the Zelda Maker things like that, and it's like nah 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 we're not gonna do that. Let's see. What, oh, what is yeah. he playing? That at? reminds me, since we keep going back and forth about the Switch and we're kind of getting off topic, uh, we were still on the news. So the next part is, it looks like Microsoft is proposing to use uh, Xbox Live as what we would call a single sign-on service. And uh, generally, what a single sign-on is is some of us use it at work. It's where you sign in with one account and it automatically signs you into everything else. Now, anyone on the Switch who's played uh, Minecraft for the Switch might be familiar with this because you have to sign into your Nintendo account and your Microsoft account to play. And uh, Ryan was telling me there was another game that you do that on as well. Uh, Fortnite, apparently. You can use your Microsoft ID to get in with. We don't know about that because Fortnite sucks. Yeah, I mean... I would not say Fortnite sucks. I would say it's probably a very fantastic game that none of us play. Well, that, and it keeps all the 12-year-olds at bay, so they're playing Fortnite, and we can truly enjoy online gaming now. That is true. The, What's the, the last game you the... played online? Dark, Dark Souls. Souls doesn't count. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fellow who wrote that tweet, um, I don't know if he was being serious, but he's a he is truly a fucking genius. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic, dude. I don't remember. Uh, check out our Facebook page. We posted a while back, uh, probably earlier this week. But yeah, pretty much Fortnite keeps 12 year olds off of Xbox Live and other online uh, services. So we can truly enjoy the games that are good. Exactly. So what we were reading Game about earlier year. is that uh, it was actually more than just that. That was my initial guess is that Microsoft was just going to have it where you could uh sign in with your account everywhere track your stuff and ryan was uh reading the article to us and you were saying that essentially they're going to try to work it so they can offer some of the xbox live arcade games uh, you can get gamer points for playing like uh switch games things like that so it yeah, makes so- me wonder though is this kind of a sign that microsoft is eventually going to pull out of the console race well no sense? no this is this is all still just speculation i mean what it basically is is that uh, they're using this as a, a thing on mobile and tablets right now, but they're saying that they want to get into every space. So there's already a precedence, like James was saying, through games like Fortnite and uh, Minecraft. So it's like it's already like shoehorned into Switch through those games. So it wouldn't be a stretch to imagine that they may be able to launch onto it. Like it's definitely something you could do. And we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but everybody already knows I use my switch as like a steam machine and they release just like anything under the sun on the switch. Now, if you port it, they'll put it on there. So it's not a stretch to think, Hey, you know what? Nintendo love them. They've got this great online mobile platform as long as you got wi-fi or a good hotspot plan you could probably switch anywhere but online on switch sucks and there's already games <gasps> don't say that we'll get sued hey i'm the only one who has it i paid for it i could say whatever i want yeah we pay for garbage sir but it basically like you can play a lot of games on switch online without even having the switch online service So they could almost offer Microsoft as an alternative and still reap the benefits of everybody buying the backlog of Microsoft online available games through the Switch platform and instantly upgrade the Switch's connected activity instead of having to use their bullshit first party me based friend code system. I think what Microsoft is up to, and if I'm right, I think it's quite quite genius is they really corporate buyout uh not quite they really do want to insert themselves and everything they want to become the steam of console gaming uh because uh, anyone who doesn't play games on pc much at all the reason steam has become the de facto standard is because for the most part they do everything very well everything is centralized into your steam account your games library your game saves community hubs review pages fan art articles Those weird cards 
yeah, all these uh, weird little jewels and cards you can collect and things like that. And even to the point that, say, for instance, I go to Green Man Gaming or Humble Bundle, I buy a game with the exception of a few, like some of the EA Origin or the uh, the Blizzard games. When I buy it, I'll say, okay, here's your activation key for like on Epic Game Store or here's the Steam key. You can use either one to activate it. Do you know about Chrono.gg? Uh, Chrono.gg, I do not. Okay, so anybody out there who doesn't know... They are a, and we're going to try to downplay this a little bit more in the future, but it's so applicable here, I have to say it. Hashtag not a sponsor. Hashtag could be a sponsor because I've seen them sponsor other people. Hashtag this was totally unintentional segue. So it's a service where you make an account, you go to their website every day, every single day for 24 hours, they have a new discounted game, heavily discounted, and... You could buy it there, and you get your key. But when you visit the site, they have this little coin icon. Uh And every day that you go there, just for going there and looking at the deal, you could click that, and it adds to your pool of coins. And every it used to be every subsequent day you logged in, it got the bonus built up. And you would accrue points and you would eventually hit three different ranks to open a chest to get bonus coins. Well, they removed that. Now you can log in and it's just every time you click it, it doesn't have to be subsequent days. So you don't, you know, go check your email every day at work and then lose out on the weekend and have to start over if you forget. It just keeps building up. I've bought a ton of... Of $1 of, games. No, free. Totally free games through this. I have Steam codes for games that I've never played, but I've always been like, when I get into PC gaming, this will be nice to have in my library on Steam. Oh, you have no idea, sir. It snowballs so fast. Oh, no, yeah. But it's just, it's totally free games. Like, you just go there, make an account, and just click that thing. It'll send you an email every day. If you're up on your email... It's just a bunch of free games. Now, my curiosity would be if uh, you said this was Chrono.gg. Yes. I kind of wonder if they're a, and I'm saying this with air quotes, even though you all can't see it, a uh, game service like Kingwin or G2A. There's no installer or launcher or anything. Basically, all it is is that those coins that you accrue up, they only release two games every two weeks to the coin shop which is where you can spend those coins, and they only have an allotted amount of keys that they'll give away. So once they're all claimed, those games are gone. There's no, like, open list of old games that you can go and buy. Like, for the last few months, there was probably, like, six or seven games in there because nobody had claimed all the keys. Now there's two games in there, and they're only, like, the first or second most recent batch of games and they're, I think they're like over 90% claimed. They're just not something I'm interested in. And I've got 10,000 coins now. Usually you get like a big good game for 6,000 coins and down, but it really doesn't take that long. Just anybody who's interested, check it out. It's a decent service. I use it. I got sent to it by watching a YouTuber that I liked. It, it's good stuff. Hashtag plug. What's their name? The Game Deflators. Oh, I think he was saying to plug oh. whoever it was, but... Oh, I thought you said I was about to say our we got name. Some, yeah, no, I, th- I thought we had some future Inception going on there. Oh, yeah, that was the future Inception. Game Deflator Inception. Hashtag will be a sponsor. Yes. Hashtag we're no, I'm, sponsor pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Cat Icarus sent me there. Oh, Cat awesome. Icarus? Yeah. All right, I should probably write that down so I can remember to uh, at least tag them or kind of give the minor shout on our Facebook that they've been mentioned. I'm pretty sure I was watched at least as one of his shows before. So, all right, before we go by, go back into another tangent argument about Nintendo, what was next on the list? Oh yes, so we did mention this earlier that uh, the uh, our crappy game challenge kind of backfired on us, unfortunately. Backfired on you, sir. Yeah, uh, backfired on you. So I'm gonna have to like get real drunk so I can make sure I enjoy my game. So if we didn't mention this last time, we're making a little adjustment to the crappy game, Sean. So from here on out, uh, whenever I pick two games, everyone on social media, preferably on our Facebook, just because it's easier, will have the opportunity to vote on what horrible game 
John and Ryan get to play. And that will be publicly known and privately known, and it will be unknown to me as well up until the moment they tell me. Uh, they get to pick one crappy game for me to play in retaliation. Hey, what was oh, the game, wait, he, wait, what wait, was the game wait. that he has to play? What, he has to play Wu-Tang Clang. And what was it that you said? Wu-Tang Pow? Wu-Tang Pow! That's From right. the classic Chappelle skit. Correct. Correct. Wait, I... So keep going about the rules. So essentially, I... Although I am totally open to suggestions, because apparently... Given the choice between Ghostbusters 2 on NES and Space Ace on SNES, uh, everyone voted for Ghostbusters 2, and somehow they, I think they did it out of sheer spite because I was enjoying watching them. Uh, they have managed to, oh no, we enjoyed it. It wasn't that bad. Da 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 da. Actually, I legitimately okay. liked the game. It but wasn't you, bad. Yeah, I did then, too. Then you went and played it for the, the full hour. You said the other one was way worse, well, and we were lucky. Actually, that is correct. They were initial last week, they were so dreading it. They were like, well, what about the first one? Can we play that? And I was like, you guys, I'll let you play it if you want, but you really don't want to. Well, I have I have an idea. What if... Oh, God. What if you pick the oh two games and everybody votes, and whichever one they don't vote for us to play, you have to play the other one? Because you <laughs> said that... No. You said the other game was way no, worse than Ghostbusters. You know what this guy will do? He'll go ahead and pick a good game or a decent yeah, game. Yeah, but then we'll and see then who pick the a bad game. Then we'll see who the public wants to play the crappy game. Yeah, us every time because <laughs> he's going to set it up. No, we. I like the. Secrecy. I get a vote too. You know. I yeah exactly. I like the secrecy component. We can pull any game and just be like, dude, here's what you're playing. All right, we'll just surprise him by doing this one one time. Like, he'll pick two really, really bad games, and we'll just throw the other one in his face. But now he knows, because you just said it. Well, we can always, of course, you know, reverse the tables. You guys can always, you know, have them vote on, like, what shitty game should James play? And then I can have my revenge. And uh, All right, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's still new. It's yeah. still new to me, I guess. So I do apologize, yeah, gents. It was, uh, it was a bit of a letdown, ladies and gentlemen, but I will... I will definitely try harder. I mean, there's there's so much to choose from in the NES library. But if you gentlemen would like to, let's talk about give it. your honest review of the game. Yeah. Okay. So, I okay. So when we first started playing that game, man, it kind of seemed like BS. We had to kind of yeah, get a died sense of twice a, really quick. Yeah, yeah. But like after we died twice, like it got to a point where I was getting through the first level without dying and without oh, getting yeah. hit. So I mean, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought the graphics were great. I mean, it had a little synopsis of some part of the story. I only watched the video. I didn't really read it because yeah. we kind of. I don't know. We were expecting the worst by the time we got there. The controls felt very fluid, so there was no issue with that. Yeah, nothing felt like it was the game's fault. Everything really felt like I had enough control to get around and maneuver. Like, And we we got way better by like learning the patterns and mm-hmm. all the classic gaming tools that you need to get through these Yeah, games. within 20 minutes, we pretty much were almost done completing level two, having never played that game before. And really, honestly, the two of us don't play a whole lot of NES games anyways. Um, we're more Super Nintendo and up at that point. So for us, an NES game at times, it takes a little bit of getting used to just kind of going back to that feel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, by the time we got to level two, I was like, yeah, I could play this for another 30 minutes and probably get to level three pretty quickly. So you guys are saying that in level two, when the when you're trying to jump the uh, the humongous gaps in the road, that when the game just mysteriously stopped your jump short and made you fall right in the pit, y'all didn't... That didn't bother y'all. No, we, no, it, it we were a fault. little bit upset by it, but we figured it out each time we learned more. Okay, well, this is where first we learned. Okay, this is the part of the level it comes up in. Then we learned. Okay, you got to actually jump. Well, you got to speed up, too. and then you have to accelerate. And I think it only took us like three or four tries until we got it, and we learned yeah. one new critical piece of information. And each then the time. next piece was we had to get past like the green blocks that were coming up, and it switched the the boost mode for the car and the next jump it was like it, rotating it was aisles like, yeah, that it was, it was rotating, popping up but in. it wasn't super slow and actually i did hit it on the last play part or you know time that we were playing it and uh, i did hit it but i didn't hit the jump correctly and i didn't accelerate fast enough so that's what it was just trying to learn the timing on when that rotation would kind of kick into effect okay ladies and gentlemen i i think we have a conspiracy going on here so they're going to force me to have to get more creative with the crappy game challenge where it's not just, oh, you have to play this crappy game. I'm going to start being more creative in the future where 
we'll do things such as, oh, you need to complete this level in this game and things like that. I mean, just well, for example, I mean, like, the, the you challenged tunnel. us to do Mrs. Spider's Tea Party, and we made it through that. Oh, oh that you guys bragged garbage. Too. Well, we beat it like right away, man. It was the first game we completed together. You know, yeah, you know, I'm I'm kind of feeling Bart versus a Space Mutants and is don't else you future. dare, sir. yeah, don't throw. We just got through Futurama. I'm still not into the idea of playing more of Matt Ronin games. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really not up for that myself. Um, I'm trying to find. Uh, ghostbusters 2 review and see well here i'll tell you what he says here so here on the wiki we've got uh ghostbusters 2 uh developers imagineering published by activision uh came out in april of 1990 for na uh december 1990 for eu on the nes and uh the only review it has on here is uh, Computer and Video Games gave it a 61% rating and wrote that it, quotes, has awful graphics, average sound, and isn't exactly a steal at the price. Avoid. Well, uh, well I don't think that's right. I thought the sound was all right. Yeah, I thought so too. Metacritic, was, by the way. It was Honestly, a the decent like, iteration of the was. Ghostbusters theme. And dude, yeah. Metacritic has um, a positive ratings of 90 or higher, it looks like, or just positive ratings in general. No, positive ratings, they have 90 of them on here. Uh, 69% of their overall users graded it positively. Mixed reviews was 37, and there's two users that gave it negative reviews for a 7.3 score. So well, that's about a 60-ish. My question for no, those... 7.3. My question for those Metacritic reviews would be... Metacritic's a little inflated, though, isn't it? Not really. I no, mean, it's, hey, it's, we're the game inflators. We and, well, my question to those Metacritic users that actually put in those positive reviews was... Did they play the game before or after they watched that Glass Ghostbusters reboot? Because I think that would have a direct influence on how well <laughs> that game, you know, feels to them in comparison. So speaking of how the game is doing these days, it's going loose ten twenty two, complete twenty nine ninety nine, and, and after our review, it'll go up to eleven dollars. Woo! Or and down to five, one or the it's other. It's shipping loose about one sale per day and complete about two sales per month. Now, I do have a legitimate question. If you're looking on price charting, can you see how much it was uh, going for for about a year ago? Let's see. Uh, well, while he looks that up, I just cannot wait for you to play some Wu-Tang Shaolin Showdown. Wu-Tang Pow. Wu-Tang Pow. Actually, is it Shaolin Showdown? I forget, uh, I forget the name. Shaolin Style. Wu-Tang yeah. Shaolin Style, sir. So, August Wu -Tang, 2017, <laughs> it was down about oh wait hold on let's see here honestly it was it was like down seven cents last year yeah mm, so okay. it's held pretty it's, consistently yeah it's pretty it's been consistent since i think james is mad he didn't do his research on this one well james just uh, was just going by childhood memories of how terrible that game was yeah so. it's yeah. barely gone up a dollar since 2008 according to price charting yeah see when That's i look really up crappy games i actually google them first Oh, no, I gave away my secret. Oh, you don't need to. I, okay. I, I grew up with the NES, sir, so I have all sorts of shitty games in my head. But, oh, I'm sure. And I'm going to get extra creative on the shitty challenges hereafter. Sounds good. Okay, well, inflation, deflation on this, because we actually did enjoy it. I wouldn't consider it a crappy game at this point. Well, I wouldn't consider it a crappy game, but I definitely wouldn't pay $30 for it. Well, that, you're saying complete. Loose is 10 bucks. Yeah, you don't lose 10 bucks. I could see, honestly, I could see if... James challenged us to this and we didn't already have it to play like I would not be disappointed in spending ten dollars on it and I actually think I would feel more motivated to get all ten dollars out of it by getting past level two because that felt very doable yeah if we if the two of us went in together five bucks a piece to buy it I'd be cool with that I wouldn't spend ten dollars on it by itself just me um, but I'd be down to like throw down five bucks with somebody to sit back and enjoy a few hours of hatred yeah so yeah me personally i'm pretty sure i bought my cuppy for uh for about 10 bucks last year uh the reason i had to ask about that is because i just wanted to see if the uh the movie reboot had any inflation effect on it during that time which of course we don't remember exactly when the reboot came out so it's hard to pin it down but you said throughout the average it didn't really move uh me personally i think at ten dollars to me it's worth it because since I was a kid, I've always been a fan of the real Ghostbusters. And by that, I don't mean 
uh, a smart ass comment about the uh, the movie reboot. Um, but the actual original two movies and the cartoon series called the real Ghostbusters and the comic books and the the crazy toys and stuff. Uh, anyone who's a AVGN fan has obviously seen his videos about that stuff, but that's essentially the cartoons and comics were based on the two movies and that's what the game is based on as the second movie. So to me, just because it fills a hole in my collection and because I still love the, the real Ghostbusters, I'd throw the 10 bucks down on it again. So why don't we agree this game, it's not inflated, it's not deflated, it's probably stable. It's just, it's just right. Just, just right. right. All right, so somebody blew it just right. That's right. This man has hey, no Hey, it's dick. the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. It a little spud slime to me. I can just keep quoting this. Well, no, I guess Vampire Night. We thought that was worth the money. Well, yeah. No, Vampire. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Ryan. Perhaps y'all should play Devil Kings. Oh, God. That's we don't my... have light guns. That's on my you shelf. Don't need one. No, we don't need light guns, and it's on my shelf. Um, not currently, though. All right, well, I got nothing else, man. Uh, we'll have to figure out the next game, I guess, from whatever's still yeah. on my shelf. Yeah, once uh, once everything's packed up, we'll see what we have left, folks. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of Sega Saturn games. We haven't done that yet. Yeah, I don't even think I've played a Saturn in decades. All right, so we got Sega Saturn games and Sega CD games, as well as some PS1, Dreamcast, all my Sega, and N64. So It's a safe bet if it's Sega. I've never played it. Do you have uh, Dynamite Cop on Dreamcast? I that sounds fun. I it actually do. is. It would be a great candidate for the inflation deflation. It is a fun game. It is short. You guys could sit down and knock it out in a couple I mean, hours. You, you can go look right there. I mean, it's it should be one of the first. I'll, I'll, How dare you, sir? You don't have your collection memorized? No. Well, God, no, I don't. We'll, have my collection we'll memorized. see if we can. We'll, we'll see if we can find well, it. Give me, give me whatever seconds, we decide Ryan. on. Give me two Hold seconds. On. Watch Ryan. this shit, Ryan. Ryan, John, you're a copy of James Pond. There. How did you get it? Give me one moment while I I got that in my cup. By the way. And how did you get it? James Pawn was purchased at a pawn shop, actually. Okay, and where did you get your Dynamite Cop on Dreamcast? Dynamite Cop on Dreamcast was purchased at my old job. Oddly enough, in a dynamite shop. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, folks. He is a liar, mister. I don't have my collection memorized, but he knows where he got everything. Of course I do. I remember all the deals I got. Come on now. Ryan and I played this game. Where did you get Jurassic the Hunted? Jurassic the Hunted, I got it at Goodwill earlier this year for about six bucks. I believe him. Where did you get your Jurassic Park Operation Genesis? I don't have a copy. You have the one on Xbox or something, don't you? Nope. Oh, it must have just came into the store and you weren't able to get it. Yeah, because we were pricing it like 80 bucks at the time when it was going for 50. Woo! And this is uh, right before the real Creston game. Are you guys just going to keep pulling games out, dude? Yeah, well, but I grabbed Act Razors. You probably know where you got that. Act Razor, I probably got that in a lot from a pawn shop as well. I do believe I still need the second one. Hashtag we do take donations. Uh, yeah, we'll take donations. Yeah, dude, like, uh, Just honestly, kidding, please don't do that yet. Yeah, James and I, and we've talked about this. We've brought it up. You can pretty much pull any game off that shelf, and for the most part, I know where I got it. Yeah, it's it's very weird. We both realized it years ago. We don't know why, but we generally will know where we got things from. We don't know. Hey, what the hell I'm we the have. same way. They all came from the Nintendo eShop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. I think you that's how we you close it. For them too. I think that's how we close it. So, uh, Dynamite Cop, I guess next week on the Dreamcast. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So that's what we were playing next week. Uh, this is episode 22 of the Game Deflators podcast. I'm John. I'm Ryan. I'm James, and I'm going to have to get a barf bucket. For what? Wu-Tang Pow. Wu-Tang Pow. We can't close the episode with that again. Do you have a <laughs> Wu-Tang kick, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I don't know any other no. Wu-Tang stuff. All right. Well, we are the, the Game, Game Deflators. Deflators. That was kind of off, but I think we That's did it. That's all purpose? Yeah, maybe. All right. We get robbed? We're the robbed? Game Deflators? We're the Game Deflators. Later. <laughs>